Welcome back. This time I'm going to show you how I made a little park scene. The general composition for it I made in the first video, and in this one I'm going to show you how I made individual objects. I'm starting by making the sewage pipe on the side, because first of all it's going to occupy a lot of screen space in the final image, and second of all because it's a very New York thing, right? And we need a place for Ninja Turtles to live. Here I'm copying bricks around the sewage pipe in the shape of an arch. I'm doing that by copying them around the 3D cursor. To do that, select the object you want the 3D cursor to be in the center of, press Shift S cursor to select it, and then using greater than by menu, move the pivot point to the 3D cursor. I added the rivets around the pipe in the same way. Now I'm adding this green sewage water. I made it starting with a cube, adding subdivision surface modifier and extruding it a couple of times. To tweak the shape after, I moved the vertices with proportional editing on. I added a displace modifier to give the water a more organic look. After adding the displace modifier, I created a new texture and in texture properties tab chose wood texture. I copied the mesh and made it smaller to add individual water droplets. I did that to make the shape look more interesting and to have more things there that could reflect light. I always work with separate meshes within one object because it makes things easier. All the modifiers that you're gonna apply are gonna be applied to all the meshes within one object. Like in this case, if I needed to tweak one property of a modifier, I wouldn't have to repeat it for every single mesh because they're part of one object. I'm tweaking the texture properties to get the desired look. I wanted to make the waves bigger, so I need to scale the texture up. To do that, you need to add an empty. In Displace Modifier, change constraints from Global to Object and choose the object you just made. If you rotate and scale the empty now, it will affect the texture. After tweaking the shape a little bit more, I moved on to editing colors. I experimented with the subsurface scattering using a bright yellow color as a subsurface color. Then I decided that compositionally it made sense to add some more volume to the bottom here, so I added an extra splash of water. I'm trying to work on everything at once. I want to preview my final work to see if what I'm doing is working. This is a rim light. I love using rim lights because they lit the side of the object and give that nice shiny edge, which really helps to define the shape. Here I'm starting to make the lawn. I wanted the geometry of it to look different from other man-made objects in the scene, like the curb and the pavement. I wanted it to look more organic, so I used the displace modifier again. I'm making the plants the same way I made the plants for the apartment building video, using the skin modifier and then adjusting the thickness of the leaves with Ctrl A. This is a very simplistic looking plant, but it fits the style that I'm going for. As you can see, I just made one plant, copied it multiple times and rotated the instances. This is the beauty of 3D. You don't need to remake the same plant five times. You can just copy one and rotate it. Now I'm moving on to the bench. You just saw me separate the back part in two planks by using bevel. To do that, you press Ctrl B, switch to face selection mode and delete the face. It's very fast and very efficient. I'm using bevel again here to make the rounded ends of the metal part of the bench. If you do that yourself, make sure to merge vertices by distance after, because otherwise you're going to have multiple vertices at the same place at the ends. Now it's just a matter of copying the metal part to the other side, using extrude faces along normals on the wooden planks, and the simple bench is done. As you can see, this is a very simple design that I'm going for here, but it's going to work well for our piece. Now I'm going to apply some materials. They don't necessarily have to be the final materials, of course, but I like to add color at this stage, and then when I'm done with all the other parts, I can always go back and adjust the colors to my liking. I'm making the tree trunk the same way I made the plants, by using skin modifier and adjusting the thickness. In this case, I made the roots thicker with Ctrl A and the branches thinner. The crown of the tree I'm making out of three separate blobs. It's a very common way to depict a tree, by drawing separate volumes. And then I'm adding a displace modifier again, this time with Voronoi texture. As you can see, you can get many different results by using the same tool and just playing with its properties. This is the beauty of 3D modeling. 
the variety of results you can get with a minimal set of tools. Here I'm adjusting the Voronoi texture that I used the Displace modifier with. And this is exactly what I was just talking about. Look at the different results I'm getting just by tweaking the color ramp property. At some point this looked like a huge rock with cracks, a surface of an alien planet, or a sponge from the bottom of the ocean. All with just one operator. I decided that I'm pretty happy with a subtle displacement on the tree crown and moved back to the trunk. I applied the modifiers that I had on the object, twisted it a little bit for a more organic shape and decided to do some sculpting. My absolute favorite brush for sculpting is Scrape Brush. I use it a lot here. And here I also used Layer Brush to add some volume where I felt like it was needed. After I was happy with the result, I wanted to compare the tree to the rest of the scene to make sure I didn't overdo it. Because obviously I didn't have any sculpted objects before. So I rendered the entire scene real quick to make sure the sculpted parts fit the style. Even in a very simple scene, you can greatly benefit from using some color variation. An awesome tool for that is a gradient. This is what I decided to use for the crown of the tree. This is how you set up your material nodes to get the gradient like this. The gradient can be as subtle or as eye-catching as you want it to be. Cheerful cartoonish style that I'm going for allowed me to use a very bright, fun gradient from green to yellow. To make sure the trees don't blend into each other, I decided to color one of the trees yellow. It also worked as an extra bit of storytelling. Because you look at the image and you understand a little bit more about this world. Like for example that it's supposed to be early autumn. I really like to add those details, I feel like they really bring the world to life. And with very little effort on my part. And now I'm adding gradient to other big parts of the image, like tree trunks and this brick wall. Here just one simple gradient and slight color variation on the bricks gives it a much more interesting look. It gives you a different level of polish. I decided to adjust the plants a little bit. And here you're noticing why it's really convenient to copy things as a duplicate, because I could adjust just one plant and get the results that I needed on all of them without having to repeat it multiple times. Now it's time to make the hot dog stand. There isn't anything complicated in modeling it. I'm doing the things that I've been doing for the entirety of the series, just extruding things, beveling them, scaling, moving. The difficult part is design. That's what you're doing most of the time when you're modeling. For me, a much more complex task is looking at multiple hot dog stands and deciding what are their defining features. What makes a hot dog stand a hot dog stand and what I can omit. That's the most difficult and the most fun part of modeling, decision making, design. As you noticed, I was really in the mood for a displacement modifier, so I added it here to water as well. Well, actually to frying oil. Just to have that subtle difference between smooth surfaces of man-made objects and the organic liquid. I tried a couple of different textures and decided on a wave texture at the end. I added an empty to scale the texture and made sure to make it very subtle, so it doesn't draw too much attention. The results look very different in this mode and in a render, so I always make sure to check my work and see what it looks like in the rendered view. I very rarely use circle select, but in this case, to select stripes on the umbrella it was very useful. A hot dog stand needs a hot dog. So this is what I'm adding. It's a very simple hot dog, just a couple of extrusions, subdivision surface modifier, and here it is. I edit Mayo by drawing a line with vertices, adjusting its shape manually, and then using skin modifier, and a subdivision surface on top. You could have done that with simulation, but I almost never do that, because I almost never work in a realistic style. Because what I'm looking for here is not the most realistic looking line of Mayo in the world, I just needed to look good. I needed to look good from the certain angle, and it's much easier to get that manually. We're in New York, so I'm adding a pigeon. I started with a cube, extruded it a couple of times, 
and I got a very basic stylized bird's body. As you can see, I'm tweaking the shape, and even little adjustments make the pose look different. I added eyes and wings as separate meshes, because that's what I usually do. We're in New York, so even a pigeon is going to work, so he's gonna need a tie. And some boots, of course. Maybe even a hat. I'm choosing the colors so that they don't blend in with the background. Since I know that the pigeon is going to be standing on grey tiles, I didn't want to make a regular grey pigeon, so I opted for this violet shade. I checked, the pigeon was looking pretty silly, and I loved it. And I did decide to add a hat after all. Just a pigeon standing there would be a separate object, but adding some breadcrumbs like this actually makes it into a little scene, which I really like. I also used the same color for the breadcrumbs as I did on the hot dog bun, so you can imagine that maybe somebody was eating and shared his hot dog bun with a pigeon. Or that pigeon bought himself a hot dog, depending on what kind of world this is. He's wearing a tie after all. And now he even has his little cup of coffee. I decided to add this coffee cup and a newspaper on the bench because it makes the world more lived in. You can imagine somebody was just reading that newspaper and sipping their coffee. Now the only thing that the spark is missing is a street light. Otherwise it's going to be too dangerous in the evening. You know I love adding lights everywhere I could possibly do that. And having an actual source of the light in the world makes it much better. I looked at a couple of designs of street lights and uh, made an approximation of all of them, as usual. Again, just by extruding and beveling and designing as I go. Now it's just a matter of tweaking the final composition, adding some light sources where they were missing, and we're ready to render. I'm just adding the same post-processing as I mentioned in the previous video with bloom and ambient occlusion, and the final image is ready. After recording, I adjusted the composition a little. I like what the street lamp looks like on the right side. This way, the warm light is hitting the tree and the bench, and makes the whole park look much more cozy, in my opinion. In the next video, we're gonna make the last island with a subway station. Subscribe to this YouTube channel not to miss it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.